Well, I'm glad you're here this morning. If you have your Bibles, open to Proverbs chapter number 2. Proverbs chapter number 2. As we look at a quest for wisdom, and boy, we're excited about looking at a different passage. We're in Psalm chapter 1 the last few weeks, and now head over to Proverbs a little bit as we make our way through some what I'm calling power verses. Power verses are just some verses that I think are familiar to us, and look at them in a fresh light, a new different way. I could subtitle this message, Quest for Wisdom, or Are You Smarter Than a Fifth Grader? It's a rhetorical question. The answer is obviously not, Right? I proposed once and submitted the, the answer once that, that we often um, live life's problems the way we learn to in kindergarten, all right? Not the right way. See, in kindergarten, if, you, if someone else has something you want, you just take it. People do that out there, right? And if, if someone says something mean, you say something mean back. Well, I don't know any adults who do that, right? Neither do you. And in kindergarten, you just talk when you want to. I don't know any adults who do that either. So maybe the quite better question is, are you smarter than a five-year-old? In the book of Proverbs, it's a book about wisdom, a book of truth. All of it's true. It's a wonderful book. I love the book of Proverbs, and often someone will challenge you to read a proverb a day. There's about uh, 31 days in the month, 31 chapters in Proverbs, give or take the months that have 30 or 28, 29 days, February. And if you read one uh, chapter a day, you get the, the book of Proverbs in, in, in a month. And you can do it 12 times a year. That's where we've started our kids early on reading the Bible and the book of Proverbs. A lot of practical advice, helpful advice. But Proverbs chapter 2 begins on this idea of a quest for wisdom. If you look at me in Proverbs chapter 2, starting in verse number 1, the writer says, My son, if thou wilt receive my words and hide my commandments with thee, so that thou incline thine ear unto wisdom and apply thine heart to understanding. Yea, if thou criest after knowledge and liftest up thy voice for understanding, if thou seekest her as a silver and searchest for her as hid treasures, then shalt thou understand the fear of the Lord and find the knowledge of God. For the Lord giveth wisdom out of his mouth, cometh knowledge and understanding. He layeth up sound wisdom for the righteous. He is a buckler to them that walk uprightly. He keepeth the paths of judgment and preserveth the way of his saints. And then shalt thou understand righteousness and judgment and equity, yea, every good path. Lord, I thank you for this passage of Scripture. Lord, I thank you for the wisdom that you offer to bring and store up for us. Lord, I pray that our hearts would be turned towards you today and be tuned to your word. Lord, speak to us. Speak through me these next few minutes that I have. Lord, help me to say those things that will be profitable, right according to your word. Lord, bless this time in Jesus' name. Amen. I don't know if you remember that little show, Are You Smarter Than a Fifth Grader? Uh, They found some of the funny quips from that show, some answers that that obviously don't make much sense. These were all adults that made these answers. And the first question that, that they missed was this, what planet in our solar system takes the least amount of time to orbit the sun? What planet? Now, you may not know the answer right off the top of your head, but you would know that if you answered the moon, it would be wrong because the moon's not a planet. Yet, that was the answer the adult gave the moon with the reason because we see it every night. This one was given to an adult, a 20-year-old, from the state of California. The question was, which state is farthest west? And the options were California, Nevada, or Alaska. And they missed it. They said California. It's not California. How about this one? You may not, some of you will know this, how many sides does a trapezoid have? Four. Four, four, four. Don't feel badly. Um, All the kids knew the answer. But the lady with a 3.3 GPA in college and a fourth grade son didn't have a clue about that either. The last one was a million dollar question. Million dollar question was, in this sentence, how many times does the letter H appear? And they read, apparently read the sentence. The sentence is this, the eighth letter of the alphabet. If you read that again, you took the time, there are five H's in that sentence. For a million dollars, he missed it and guessed four. 
Wouldn't you be irritated if you missed a million dollars? Because you can't count H's in a sentence? Well, how do you wake up the next day with a happy heart? <laughs> right? To know that you're right there and if you can just count, the, I mean, there's no crazy words, the eighth letter of the alphabet. If you came up with four, you probably missed one in, in eight is where most people miss the second, the second H. But uh, uh, how do you get the next day and, and, and how do you live it down the weeks later when that episode finally plays? And they say, hey, you know, hey, Joey, I saw you on TV last night, right? If you're like most, well, if you're like me, if that was one of my friends, I'd come in just with a big five sign, right? <laughs> Not say a word and say, oh, man, this close, this close, almost a million dollars, you blew it. Yet how much worse would it be to live this life without God's wisdom? We would kick ourselves on missing a million dollars for sure, but ought we not to kick ourselves if we miss the wisdom that God offers to give to us? If we miss the wisdom that God has for us in his word, and in the book of Proverbs, a book full of wisdom, the Proverbs in chapter 2 begins with this challenge, with this quest for wisdom. It challenges us to go after wisdom, to seek after wisdom, to find out what it is, and to obtain it from God. See, there are three words used in the book of Proverbs uh, repeatedly. One is knowledge. And throughout the book of Proverbs, uh, you will find this word knowledge. And what that means, quite literally, is to know it. And so if you come to church, you may hear some verses. That is knowledge. Maybe you've heard the verse John 3, 16, For God so loved the world that he gave his only begotten Son. That's knowledge. If you know that God loves you, that's knowledge. It's knowing something. But then in the book of Proverbs, it uses another word repeatedly, and that's the word understanding. You see, it's something, it's just one thing just to know it, but to have understanding is to understand how this concept actually works or what it actually means. means. You know, many people may know a portion of Scripture, but may, know have, but, but, but may have no clue what it actually means. I would say there's a verse in Scripture that is often misquoted and misapplied. In, the, in the Matthew chapter, I believe it is chapter 7, um, Jesus says, Judge not that you be not judged. And people all day long who don't know God, who have barely darkened the doors of a church, can quote part of that verse, misquote it, and say, you're not supposed to judge me. They know it, but they don't understand it, right? And what that verse is really meaning is, be careful how you pass judgment, because to the, what, the standard that you hold someone else to, I'm holding you to that standard. And we're quick to look at someone else and say, oh, look at them. We are quick to look at someone else's problems and magnify them and bring our problems down really, really small. Oh, I may have an anger problem, but look at them. Look, wow, their problems are terrible. They're horrible. And, and I may do this, but they're a, bit, a lot bigger. And so an understanding in Proverbs is to know actually what it means. Not just know it, but to understand it. And then there's this third word we're talking about today, and that's the word wisdom. Proverbs chapter 9, verse 10, the fear of the Lord is the beginning of wisdom. Sometimes we attribute wisdom to someone who is old. Say, oh, you have a lot of wisdom. They have a lot of life experience. You don't often say of a 15-year-old, well, that's a very wise person. You don't say that. But you say it of someone who has some life experience. You see, wisdom in Proverbs means to apply it or actually do it. I know that because in Psalm chapter 34, it's a psalm of David. Many people think he wrote it in the cave of Machpelah, and he's there with or a little cave outside this, and he's there with, his, with the kids or his soldiers in the cave. And he says this, he says, Come ye children, hearken unto me, I will teach you the fear of the Lord. Then he goes on to say this, What man is he that desireth life and loveth many days that he may say good? Keep thy tongue from evil and thy lips from speaking guile. You see, the wisdom came. I'll teach you the fear of the Lord. The beginning of wisdom. Wisdom is now applying and doing those things that you know and understand. So as we look at this quest for wisdom in Proverbs, it's not just enough to know it. It's not enough if you could quote the entire Bible. That's not enough. You're not just a robot or, or, or that. It's not just enough to know what it means to understand it. What it is, what God's asked us to do is to have wisdom, and that is to now do what he says. So when the writer comes to us and he says to do these things, this quest for wisdom, he's looking for it to make a difference 
in your life and in my life. It is easy to sit in church, to hear the preaching and walk out and not do anything. Is it not? Yeah, I've all have heard some good messages. Tuesday night message with Pastor Monty. Tremendous message. If you missed it, look it up on YouTube or on, on the Facebook live, the live stream. Uh, it was a tremendous message. Some of the principles that he presented were not brand new concepts. Some things we've probably heard before, but we don't always apply them and do them. Our problem is often a doing problem. So as we look at this passage, I want to uh, challenge us to seek the wisdom, but not just seek it to know it and to understand it, but seek it to do it. To do it. So that when that million-dollar question comes, and you have to make the million-dollar decision in your life for the Lord, you make the right decision. So you don't look back with regret. You say, I followed God, I followed His wisdom, and I see His reward, His results. I see in this passage the first thing, that this decision to obtain wisdom, obtaining wisdom is a direct decision. So what do you mean by that, Brother Howell? Well, it says this in, in verse number one of chapter two, my son, if thou. We have a current culture where you can buy direct and save. There's a Costco and there's a Sam's Club. How many people are Sam's Club people? Anybody in here? How many people are Costco people? I'm going to say, you know what, I go to, I go to Walmart. All right, fair enough. That's all right. We have recently started doing some more grocery shopping at Sam's Club. Only because now as my kids get a little older, they eat a whole lot more. And uh, nothing to do with me eating a lot more, of course. It's obviously my kids and my family. And uh, boy, they've got some, you know, super-sized pack. Shell House, did you guys shop at Sam's Club too? <laughs> no, okay. Uh, I grew up from a big family, seven kids in my family, and my, I feel like my parents were always buying in bulk, it seemed like. And uh, we had enough uh, frosted flakes to last us through Y2K until Jesus comes back. It seemed like growing up. You can buy direct and save. And the thing is, in this particular uh, uh, quest for wisdom, I don't have to go through somebody else. I can go there myself. You say, well, why is that a big deal, Pastor Howell? Let me tell you why it's a big deal. Because years ago, people didn't have a Bible or they couldn't read, they weren't literate. And so a speaker would get up in some churches, a priest would get up and he would read the Bible and he would tell the people what it said, but they weren't always honest about it. Can you imagine if you didn't have a Bible, if I got up and said, well, the, uh, the Bible says this morning that, that thou shalt honor thy pastor with lavish gifts. Oh, oh, oh my, oh my, and, and large sums of money. Oh, oh, wow. Then shalt thou have success. Oh, well, that, that's an awkward passage, right? Wouldn't that be terrible? Yet you can go to God's Word. You say, Pastor Howell, it doesn't say that anywhere. In fact, it says this and says this. You say it's a, it's a direct decision. It's one that you can make, I can make. You know, little birds, when they're born, they're fed by their mothers. They go out there. We had a little nest 